Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 12 of our TypeScript Fundamentals video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about understanding module loaders of JavaScript. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 11 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. Module loaders. There are different types of module loaders available in JavaScript, something like CommonJS, System.js, AMD, UMD, and ES2015. So there are even more. I have just listed one of the most popular module loaders. So these are used for JavaScript, especially while you work with multiple modules and you want to import them during the execution of your program on a browser because browser will not track of the path of file where this particular JS files is actually sitting. So you need to somehow tell browser that these are the dependent files which has to be executed before calling this particular piece of method. So module loaders in a high level is something like this. So module loaders are used to resolve the problem of loading multiple dependent modules from various location before the methods are actually being called. And that's why module loaders are really, really used. And this model loaders is really important, as I already said, because while you work with a browsers, you know, you need to know where this particular dependent files are sitting and how this has to be executed. These heavy lifting jobs are being taken care of by model loaders. Model loaders are fast and asynchronous, and hence they don't bog down your application loading time, and especially for the web application. Some of the most commonly used web application module loaders are Require.js, Browserify, and Webpack. So these are the most commonly used web application module loaders. So they are used in conjunction with the TypeScript as well, something like AngularJS, where you can build the modularized code and then you can use this module loader to perform the operation. So let's quickly see a demo of what I really mean because this is a very, very complex concept again and this is not the scope of our TypeScript fundamental video series. But still, I'm just touching it a little bit because we may be encountering this kind of situation while we start working with automating the TypeScript-based JavaScript applications, right? So this is just a heads up, guys. We may be using this in future, right? So. Let's quickly flip to Visual Studio Code and understand how things work. All right, so we are telling something about the module loaders and I said there is something called as common JS, system JS, AMD, UMD, ES2015, right? So where are these things being specified? Are we specifying anything before in our TypeScript? Because as we can see that we have different TS files and we also have different JS files and map files for this particular project, which is being used or which is going to be used by our web application if they want. But currently our Node.js, which is executing this particular TypeScript file is actually running or managing these different files. How is this Node.js is actually managing? Well, by default, Node.js is managing using what is called as common JS loader. So if you go to the tsconfig.json file, it is by default using common JS as I already said, right? So if I want to change this to maybe system.js, so in order to change this, again, there is something called as modules, oops, modules, and you can see that it is common JS by default. So you can specify common JS or AMD here, and I'm just going to change this to maybe system which is for the system JS in a short form and now I am also going to specify the target as ES maybe six I'm just gonna save it and now if I try to compile this particular project you can see that I am getting an error here and it says that the system is not defined Again, guys, this is completely out of the scope of what our discussion in TypeScript is actually, but you can see that once I gave the system as the module loader, we are getting an error here. And the reason is because this is not the way it has to be executed. 
it has to be somehow executed in a different way because system.js uses the require option and which we did not have mentioned that in our code anywhere right so i'm just going to stop this guy right now and i'm going to close it and now let's say if i want to change this to common js i'm going to save it and if i try to run this time you can see the code is actually executing without any problem so as i said the common js works fine because it's a default way which node.js actually understands so now if i change this to amd i'm going to stop this and if I execute this time, you can see that I'm getting a different error this time. It says that the define require exports is missing. So what is that? Well, let's quickly fix this. Let's say if I am going to the students.ts file and instead of this export default, let's say I'm going to change this from export default to class student. Here, the export statement is going to change a little bit, very, very little bit. Instead of export students, I'm just going to change this to export is equal to students, right? And now if I specify this, then the app.ts file also changes. So here, it is going to be something like let start is equal to oops import stat is equal to require and then I'm going to specify the path here dot slash it is going to be student right so now if I come back all the way down you can see that this particular stat is still resolved and if I do an F12 you can see this taking me to this particular class which means it's okay so now if I just do an F5 you can see the code is still executing and it's legal, right? So this is how you can actually see that the module loaders plays a very important key role in actually working with the TypeScript and working with a different JS file to load the modules and compile the application, right? So this is just a high level of what module loaders is and because this module loader is something we will be using while automating the application with protractors and jasmine and something like that. So this concept comes into handy while you work with those kind of libraries, right? So this is how module loaders actually works. So that's it guys. This all is the module loader in JavaScript is all about. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.